Welcome back to another Torch Review. I have the G20L in from Claris, and this was sent in via Bantac for a review. Brand new model on this, so as per usual, we'll just scan over the box quickly. Uh, 3000 lumens output with a dual switch design, and there's just some specs on the side. You see they're quoting around 300 meters in range. And on more features on the back of the box, you can see we've got intelligent temperature control as well, four power levels, and two strobe modes. So the specs on this look pretty good. Um, we'll get onto the power levels a bit later on, but looking at the torch design, this is uh, still fairly compact, but it is a bit longer than the normal G20, which was um, much more of a floody light than this one. So this one has an extended range over that. So there's a little bit of a uh, size penalty, but not by much. Uh, now open the back up here, you can see the micro USB port cover. So you've in torch charging that fits in quite firmly and they've redesigned the button in line with their other models. So we now have the uh, flat button design, which is a small improvement, but avoids accidental activation and the bit of knurling on the body and flat edges feels quite comfortable in the hand. As I said, quite similar to the G20 in a lot of ways, although not identical. We have the dual button, the button on the tail or base, and this one's recessed enough so that it's not going to get activated. You can uh, base stand it quite stably. Uh, a new LED on this XHP 72P2 uh, with an orange peel reflector. And you'll notice the crenulated bezel on the top as well. Although it's not stainless steel, that's something that I might have liked to see. You'll also see that the depth of the reflector is quite deep, particularly compared to uh, some of the other uh, 26650 torches that I've looked at. So later on we'll have a look at the range on this. There's the protector for the battery, and this is the uh, Claris cell rated to 5000 milliamp hour, and um, this is a protected cell with a button top. But as you have springs in both the top and inside the torch, you can use the flat top cells without any problems at all with this torch. Be it protected or unprotected. You can see the um, square cut threads there, although it's not anodized, so you can't twist to unlock, to lock it out rather. And the wrist strap, micro USB charging cable, and you get a spare O-ring. This is a bonus item that Bantac include. It's just a USB light. Quite bright though, handy little thing, extra to have and onto the holster, very similar to the other Claris designs that I've looked at. This has the plastic D-ring on the back, Velcro fastening, and you also have a sewn-in loop underneath that as well. So the quality on these holsters is decent. Um, Claris go for a slightly different design. They have the water resistance on the inside coating on that, and you'll have to put this um, head up due to the fact that the head is enlarged but a good fit, you'll find over time that that will mold to the shape. It's neoprene front and back to give it a bit of padding and it's enclosed around the uh, sides as well. Just a quick look at the user manual. This is gonna cover everything that I've talked about, but you can pause that and have a look if you wish. I've put a screen grab of the manual there for you, but I'll go through the user interface myself. Now the UI on this side switch, single press for on and a long press for off. Now when it's on, just press again, single press to switch through the mode levels four of them included you do have mode memory and on the base or tail switch again single press on long press off but it always defaults to the low power output so no mode memory on the tail cap switch which is useful that gives you your instant access to low and your instant turbo either on or off just long press the either the side switch or the tail switch so there's your instant access to turbo and your instant access to the lowest output as well as the mode memory. And the strobe mode is quite simply a double press. Again, either of the buttons double press to get into the strobe mode and then double press again to go through the two strobe modes that are included in this one. So I get on pretty well with the UI. It's pretty much got all the bases covered. Uh, if you need to lock the torch out, press both buttons at the same time. And if you try and press again, it will come up with the red LED just to let you know that um, it's in lockout mode. There's no mechanical lockout as I explained earlier. If you put a head down, obviously the crenulated bezel means that you'll easily be able to see if it's on and very stable with a base or tail stand. No complaints in that area. 
You can also go into the turbo mode when you have it on. I'll just show you quickly there. So very happy with the UI. Some people might prefer the base um, switch to do something different, but um, I'm okay with it. Now, if you've got it just over the edge onto the lip below the head, it will not roll. It will stop, but um, it does roll if you put it flat down. So perhaps would have put some grooves in the head section just to stop that from happening myself. Small point, but um, something I did note. You also have the four stage power level indicator, which is very common on the Claris torches, and I like it myself. I think it works very well. Gives you a good idea of battery state. And you'll see the red LED there when charging. I got 1.75 amps max touch below the quoted two amps, but still pretty fast. And the capacity came in at just under the 5,000. Really not gonna argue with um, one milliamp hour. Uh, difference and water resistance no issues at all i'm going to go through my usual beam shots now these are all standard across the torches so you can cross compare them to different models and you'll see with the claris it does have a brighter hotspot in the middle though it's quite well diffused so you get a combination of flood and a bit of extra range with that spot in the middle and i'll compare it to the olight m2r warrior purely because i've been using this torch quite a bit and you'll see that there's a more uh, warmer tint to this compared to the Claris, even though this one is the cool white. But it also has a much more flood beam. So what I'll do now is run through my normal beam shots and then we'll come back with a few thoughts at the end.
One thing you might have noticed from the beam shots is there is a bit of a jump between the low to medium and the medium to high. So that leads me on to my sort of pros and cons list. Um, personally, I think it's time Claris moved up an extra power level. At least five power levels would give you a bit more spread between them. I'd also like to see something between the high and the turbo, perhaps 12, 1500 lumens. And that would mean you could bring the medium power level down a little bit just to give a bit more balance to the range of power output that's really um it's not a deal breaker as such but it's something which did stick out to me also the anti-roll design could be improved a little bit and maybe go for a stainless steel bezel but in other areas it's a nice torch to use i enjoyed using it this has a decent bit of range certainly compared to the original g20 you've got the usual claris features which i like such as the four level battery indicator Good charging speeds, longer run times as well thanks to that larger capacity seal and as usual excellent build quality. But let me know what you think on this, what you're looking for in a torch like this. This is a mixed beam torch so it's going to appeal to people for general purpose use. So if you don't want something too floody, you want a bit more range, this would be a pretty good bet in my opinion. So thanks for watching the video, don't forget to subscribe and also check out some of my other torch reviews and I'll catch up with you shortly.